Okay, hello and welcome to this Java Bucket plugin development tutorial series. Um, in this series we're going to be looking at uh, command arguments and how to um, well use them for your plugins. Um, and to do that we're going to be creating a simple plugin which is actually going to be used for two tutorials. This one being command arguments one and the next one is going to be storing data. Um, so what we're going to be creating is a fairly simple banning plugin. So you've probably seen these before. Um, essentially, they provide a ban command, so you can ban a player. Um, and in this video, or in this series, we're going to be concentrating on the kick command, which just disconnects a player. And in the next series, once we've established how to use arguments, we're going to be concentrating on how to store a list of players, so that when you restart your server, the players that you banned are still banned. Um, obviously, we can just use the inbuilt Minecraft banning sort of text file system. However, that wouldn't really allow me to cover the point of storing a list of players, so just go with that for when we get to that part. But anyway, that's for the next series, so yeah. Okay, so what we've got so far is essentially our very basic um, Java plugin class, and I've made a start on our plugin.yml file as well. I should point out that all of our source is in here. Um, so what we're going to be doing is just first setting up the basics of the plugin, because we haven't quite done that yet. So what we're going to do is create a new class which is going to handle logging, like I said we were going to start with in all of the videos. So we're going to call this access control, which is the name of the plugin by the way. And I'll just add on logger for the sake of it. So let's just give this a constructor so we can have some stuff happen when a new instance is created. So it has to be public and the name has to be the same and we're going to pass in the actual instance of the main plugin so we're passing in an access control and that is a plugin okay so we're going to store this as a uh, property of this class a private property and again it's an access control instance so we'll just do this and we'll call this plugin as well just to be extra confusing so all we're going to do is just set this like that okay and now we've got that we can add the method which again is private and this is going to return a string and this is the method that's going to take a message that we want to log and it's going to return a formatted string so it's going to add on the plugins name and the version number so we'll just call this um, I don't know get formatted message or something along those lines it doesn't really matter because it's private um, and again, we're going to have this take one parameter, which is the message. Okay, and now I've got that. What we actually need to do is work out the name of the plugin. I mean, we do know it. We could just type it in manually. However, um, for whatever reason, if we rename the plugin in the future, it'll make a bit more sense to have it all coming from one place. So what we're going to do is actually access the plugin.yml file and get the name from there. So to do that, we need to get access to the plugin.yml, and we can do that from the plugin. Um, object that we created. So we can do plugin get description, which is this thing down here, and that returns a plugin description file, which is what the um, YML file actually is. And we're just going to call that, I don't know, PDF for short, because that's a quite a long uh, word. So that'll probably need to be imported or typo corrected. Uh, yep, import from bucket. Okay, so there we go. So now we can use this to get the information that we need. So what we're going to do is just return, uh, spelled right, nope, okay, return a new string. And the first character is going to be a square bracket. And then we're going to have inside the square brackets the name of the plugin. So we can do PDF get name, not main, name. And then we can add on a space and a V. And then we'll have the version number. So we can do PDF get version, and then we can add on a closing square bracket and a colon and a space, and then we can just add on the message that we're passing in, like so. Okay, so now we've got a function that will method. Sorry, we've got a method that will return a nicely formatted string, so we don't have to just repeat that over and over again. And then what we're going to do is wrap the methods from the main logger. Um, just so we can use it sort of more di directly without having to access another property. So something I actually sort of forgot to do was actually define the logger. 
So we'll just do that up here. Again, we'll make it private, and its type is logger. And this is the thing that is actually used to log the information, and we'll just call it log. So then down here, we can give that a value. Um, so we can do this log equals logger get logger. And we're just going to pass in Minecraft, like so. Okay, now it's all set up. We'll be able to create some methods here to actually log some information. So we'll create one called info and then we'll move on because it's taking far too long. So let's just create a public method and it's going to be void because it's not going to return anything and its name is going to be info so it's going to log an info level message and then here we can just have one parameter being the message and we can just use the log object so this log info and we'll just pass in the formatted message like so and that's that done. So now we need to actually create an object from this. We need to create a new instance of this class and store it as a property of our plugin so we can use it from other things. So we'll go back, we'll close that and we'll go back to our plugin and we're going to create a new property of our plugin here called the well the logger and this is going to be protected because we want to be able to use it from the actual class itself and also from classes um, within it. So we'll make that protected and we'll call it uh, where well, its type was access control logger and we'll just call this log and then down here we can do this log equals new access control logger and pass in the plugin which is just this like so okay and then now we've got that done we'll be able to use our sort of logging thing from other uh, places so essentially what we'll be able to do is log when a player is kicked. That's the idea behind that anyway. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually work on the point of this video, which is the um, actual command. So what we need to do is modify our plugin.yml, because at the moment all it's doing is defining the basics. So we need to actually add the stuff to specify that our plugin has commands. So what I'm going to do is just come down here, and we're going to add the commands section. And then within this, I had four spaces and the name of the command which is just going to be kick and then we, inside of here we need to add a description and some usage information so we'll do the description first which is going to be uh, dis disconnects is that spell disconnects? clearly not um, not that it really matters but uh, player from the server Okay, and the usage is just going to be slash kick, and then player name like this. And this is where our where our arguments come in. Okay, so that's that defined. We'll now be able to assign an executor to this in our main plugin. So first thing we need to do is actually create that class or a class to do that. So we'll just create a new class here, and we'll call this access control kick executor. Is that right? Hope so. Okay, and this class needs to either implement or extend, so I'll try implements first, because I always forget this to be honest. Implements command executor. And if it's need to extend it, that will give us a warning once we've imported it. And implement was right, good. Okay, so what I did there was just click the add unimplemented methods thing, and that gave us this on command method. And then I'm just going to tidy it up a bit by removing these unnecessary sort of comments. And also putting that back up on one line. And then these parameters again, we've done this before, so let's go through it fairly quickly. But uh, these parameters aren't very friendly, arg0, 1, 2, 3. So we'll change arg0 to sender, because that's the thing that sent the command. The actual command is passed in as the second one, so we'll just call that command. I can learn to type. There we go. Final one, no idea what this is. Feel free to let me know. <laughs> but I usually call it the label. That's why I saw it as in the tutorial I used to learn how to do this. And the final one is args. It's possible it's just the name of the command. I don't know. So, yeah. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because we're only using this executor for one command. Right. So what we need to do next is actually set this up to run when our command is executed because at the moment Bucket doesn't know about this executor. So we can do that by going back to our uh, main class here. 
and then we can just do um, from this we can do this get command kick and then we can do set executor from that and then here we can create a new instance of our executor like so and because we're going to need to access the logger we all we need to be able to access the actual plugin so we're going to pass in this here and also I'm going to spell that right which is presumably what's wrong with this um, so here's a somewhat useful thing that Eclipse can do if you spell a class name wrong it gives you suggestions and if you just look down the bit in brackets and look for one that starts with your package name that's usually the one you want so just an easy way to fix typos basically um, anyway the reason this is still red is because we haven't defined a constructor inside of our class so one, what we can do is just hover over it and go to create constructor here and then Eclipse will add this for us although to be honest I don't like the names it gives things which is why I don't usually do that and also the way it gives you that big to-do thing which is a bit annoying but we can live with it it's a little bit easier I guess so again we're doing the exact same thing as we did a moment ago I'm just going to create a private property called plugin and we're going to set it equal to plugin like so and I've spelled that wrong so that's good there we go fixed so now once we've banned or kicked a player we'll be able to use plugin log info uh, just player name name was kicked from the server sad face so that's basically that um, so in the next part what we're going to be doing is filling in this player name and actually having them kicked and also I'll just go through some of the sort of command validation that we need to do um, so I'll just save this now um, which it hasn't done, why haven't you saved? okay maybe it has, let's just make a change okay the little star's still there but oh I've made a syntax error, that's why, there we go no, why aren't you saving? okay well we'll deal with that later um, anyway let's just okay um, okay technical difficulty here's a actually slight good tip here maybe if you've got the same problem for some reason it seems that when you let Eclipse make a change by itself without you know you typing it it kind of bugs out and doesn't let you save it um, until you either edit it a lot like that or also what you can do is just close the file then it'll offer you to save it but that's just not really that relevant anyway now that our sort of the basics of our plugin is complete, what we're going to do is just export it, and then we'll just give the server a start to make sure I haven't made any glaring errors, which I may have done, but uh, I guess we'll see. And again, um, I did go through uh, this in the first video, which will be the first video in this playlist, so don't worry too much about this. Well, do worry about it, but um, for the explanation, go back to the previous one. Well, anyway, I exported correctly, so let's just give the server a start and see if it starts up. So I'm in the wrong folder, so that's prepared. So just ignore this little bit here. And if I can remember where... what was it? Um, shares. Sorry, I'm forgetting all my folder paths, because I'm in a bit of a rush. Okay, there we go. Back in the folder, so then we'll start the server. So Java, server, uh, we need to specify the maximum memory, otherwise it doesn't work. So max, let's just say 2048 without a decimal point megabytes, because I've got 8 gig, should be plenty. Then we're using a jar file, and we want to run craft bucket. So hopefully I did that right. Yep, so it's starting, and it looks like it loaded. So here we can see um, access control loaded successfully, and there were no errors, so that basically means it's worked. Although obviously at the moment um, it's converting my map to the 1.2 terrain, so that's good, I guess. It doesn't really make any difference to be honest, but whatever. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching, and come back for part two where we'll actually do the sort of arguments bit, basically.